Ladies and gentlemen, this is TVP World. I'm your host Benjamin Lee and this is Break the Fake where we debunk fake news and combat false narratives. Well, 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 it looks like the Kremlin's got itself a new shopping spree, courtesy of good old American private satellite snapshots. Ain't that just a cherry on top of the geopolitical cake? I mean, who needs a spy network when you can just browse through Uncle Sam's yard sale of classified information, am I right? Now, here's Kirill Budanov, the spy chief on the side of the Dnieper, dropping a truth bomb. According to him, the empire is probably scrolling through high-resolution photos bought from uh, US companies, just to improve its targeting practice. Can this be imagined? Putin sitting in his office, going through satellite images as it were choosing toppings for a pizza. The plot thickens. The Atlantic, citing Ukrainian military sources, claimed that the Kremlin is playing darts with long-range missiles, all thanks to some gadgets acquired from companies overseas. I bet US CEOs are now scratching their heads, wondering why their satellites suddenly have frequent communications with Moscow. Perhaps these missiles were used in today's attacks on Kharkiv and Dnieper power plant. Cheers to the modern age, where war is not just about tanks and guns, but also about who has the fanciest space images. And then there's this cipher sore eyes. Russians come to their election dressed as if it were Halloween. But instead of superheroes, they play Stalin and Lenin. Talk about fashion from the history books, eh? Now let's break this down. Stalin, the man with more skeleton in his closet than the haunted house, is being revered like some sort of national hero. I mean, seriously? This guy's got more blood on his hands than Hitler. Yet here we are, still idolizing him like he's patron saint of oppression. It's like witnessing a mass delusion in action. Can't help but wonder, what's the psychologist will make of the circus? Is it some kind of collective amnesia, or are they just stuck in a time loop where the Cold War never ended and propaganda is the only language they speak? Or hey, maybe I'm way off base here and this is just business as usual for Russian elections. You know, where dressing up as dictators is a norm and voting feels more like picking a flavor of vodka than choosing a leader. Uh, the joys of democracy, Russian style. It's like watching a sitcom only with more oppression and less laughs. And as we know, Vladimir Putin has won the election of the president of Russia and will now rule the Russians for a fifth term until 2030. Putin received the highest percentage of the vote of all his terms, more than 87%. How in fact it is not known since there were no international observers at these elections and even for Russian observers, the opportunities were significantly limited. The Russian government did everything it could to ensure victory, jailing critics, silencing the press, and introducing new laws to stamp out any criticism of the war in Ukraine. Voting rules before the elections were changed, adding electronic and advanced voting, which were already considered discredited in Russia. There's also the matter of the large-scale holding of elections in occupied territories of Ukraine. This problem is not new. 
Since 2014, Russia has been illegally forcing residents of occupied Crimea to vote in federal elections. And now occupied parts of Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions have been added where Ukrainian citizens live under the constant threat of extrajudicial execution, arbitrary arrest, torture and so on. And in these regions, the occupation authorities reported a large number of people willing to vote and about 90% of those votes were in favor of the re-election of Putin. So are we going to accept that Putin has won elections legitimately? Definitely not. Recently, journalists from the Ukrainian Pravda publishing group claimed that they will not use the word president in relation to Putin. And here we absolutely agree with them. But the interesting thing now becomes in you know, many Ukrainian journalists, media groups and forums still use the title. So we're here to help people find a nice word to describe the guy. So here you go, our favorites. We got Bunker Grandpa, Dictator, Putler, and don't forget the important names, Criminal, Murderer, Kidnapper, Occupier. Let us know down there which one you like the most. Now, moving on, I'm sure you remember this girl, also known as Miss Donia's People Republic, here at our show. Recently, she's posted a new video on her social media. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave you at that. Yeah. And uh, with that uh, disturbing image, we conclude this edition of Break the Fake. But for more news, update, and commentary, please stay tuned to TVP World.